And I'm, cause I've said to people, when you snap on stage, it's not the person that's getting snapped on. That person, that, that, they're taking it for the hundred people that didn't get it. Those hundred people that have been rude that you let go. Yeah. And it's just build up, it build up, it build up. And finally you're like, this is the one that's getting it. And that night Gary was like, here she goes, she gets it. And I'm going from a comics point of view. Yeah, yeah, give it to her. I agree. Give it, teach her a lesson. And I, I've snapped like driving. My girlfriend one time I was driving and I was making a right turn and I couldn't turn because somebody was walking in front of me and the guy behind me honked and, and he like lays on the horn and I'm like, what do you want me to run over someone? But he didn't see them. So he comes around me and screams out the window at me. So I gun it and pull up next to him at a red light. I roll down my window. I look, he's a big fat guy. And I go, you fat fuck you f-. and i just start screaming i'm gonna go get the fuck out of the car you fat fuck i'm gonna teach you to honk again and my girlfriend <laughs> i'm gonna time, teach you to honk again and my girlfriend goes that's it we're breaking up and oh, i can't boy. have this you know you snap and i go look i just taught that guy a lesson he's never gonna honk his it's horn because your girlfriend every- was really fat and she was offended <laughs> his girlfriend was 400 pounds going i don't think this is gonna work out no because i don't know how to honk and no, i'm no, a fat she, person she had a fucks. honking problem <laughs> My brother's wife told me she honks at people all the time. I was at dinner, like Christmas dinner. She goes, oh, I'm one of those people. And I'm like, really? You you honk at people? <laughs> See, this is Christmas dinner and you're about to say I hate honking. I hate it. I don't really honk at all. And what's great – wow, we have just fucking plummeted into Hackola. Let me tell you about driving. <laughs> you know, it's two, amazing. You know, they the have ho- two kind of honks. One that says, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And who is the one that designs these chairs in the car? The seats are wacky. Uh, I like really never beep. So then when I do beep, I have like this sense, a great sense of entitlement where I know I'm right, where I can lay on that fucking horn and I feel good about it. Do you know what I mean? It's never like, sorry. I can't even do that. If someone's in front of me like bullshitting, I don't give a fuck. I can't even do that. I cannot honk at people. It's like I'll just wait it out. It's weird like the, how much I can snap. And I, when somebody's like missing a light and I'm behind them and I'm late, I just still sit there like – You know I what's just, great? Have you ever done this? Someone is making a left and they're being a complete pussy about it and you're behind them and you got to make that left too. Nothing's better when you bust the move and make the left in, before them. You come from like two cars back and just show like, look, I could have made the fuck it like – I, I saw one time a car was making a left like that, and they were waiting, 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 and they had like an Ohio license plate. And I'm like, don't they know this is L.A.? And you have to turn. You have to take advantage of that. And I had diarrhea at the time, and we were like rushing to the house, and we were rushing, and I so badly wanted to get out of the car, get in their car, and just shit all over their car and go, that'll teach you when you come to L.A., fucking turn on the left. Turn. You go. You go. Even when it turns red, you go. And uh, Nick I, Hollow had a great line. He goes, I moved to L.A. I spent the first month here trying to make a left from Sunset onto La Cienega. <laughs> <laughs> I like how all of your stories about snapping, there's some trivial piece of minutia that makes you fucking crazy. Like it's a fat guy. <laughs> like you fat fuck. I'll teach you how to fucking honk again. <laughs> like somehow in the beating stage, you're going to eliminate from his cerebral cortex the ability to honk and then you're going to take him out to the woods with like a series of horns and like move his hands like a goddamn fucking Jeremy Irons movie. Like this is how we honk. It's like misery meets fucking Legends of the Fall. He's got a chalkboard around his neck and you're working his fucking hands and then you teach him how to honk again and then it becomes like a feel good movie feel good movie man uh and then like the other story you told like we're at christmas dinner yeah. <laughs> and should, then you're out you just you, said like you and i look you. and he's got ohio plates and i'm like you motherfucker <laughs> fucking ohio are you shitting me man like now i'm looking at my own my clothing like anything i'm like what is it about me that eddie's gonna drive home and call jim jeffries go and jay moore's sitting there with his fucking james pierce t-shirt <laughs> look at me i got a 60 dollar fucking t-shirt wear a t-shirt like a fucking man from the gap we would we barefoot would. Wearing fucking slippers when I come in. We would talk about that. We we uh, that's what happened. That's how we started our show because we would come home and, and we were only home like Jim said he was going to move. He told me he's like I'm going to come try out L.A. Blah blah blah. He's like and I'm like uh, good luck. And uh, he's like yeah I'm going to come out there for a little bit. He's like can I stay at your place? And the next thing I know he's got an HBO special and I'm like can I open for you? And uh, so he's staying at my house for two weeks. I, by the way, let's not gloss over the parenthetical of what you said, 
which is, well, it hasn't fucking worked for me. So if you want to come give it a try, be my guest, <laughs> asshole. And then, he, like, don't think I didn't catch that. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, Jim, you know what? Why don't you take the 18 yeah. hour? But why don't you take the 18 hour flight yeah. to LA? Good I'd luck. love to see how it works for you, Good pal. Luck. I've seen everybody trying it. Mm. And then he's like, I got an HBO special. I was like, you, you got a what? Um, he, uh, but he was supposed to only stay two weeks and he's been there like three years. But we literally were both on the road so much that we'd only see each other like Sunday and Monday in the house. And we would just sit there and talk about everyone and everything and just shit on everything. So we said, why don't we just record this? And we should fucking record it. Well, that was it's a uh, terrible Jim Jeffries. Yeah, impression. but we've done it. It's almost a year now we've been doing this. And you just shot past us in one week. Uh, I had a crazy debut. I think that's because the Kevin Smith Smodcast Network. It's it's like when you put on the pinstripes, you've got all the Yankee fans behind you. Yeah, but you're still hovering in there. What, top five? I'm fucking number. I was number one last week. This you week were? I'm five. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's because I'm on. Yes, that's right. <laughs> if you drop, that'll be hilarious. Uh, it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You know, because sometimes like they give you a point, like if there's a comment, and then other times it's like yeah, five yeah, so points. You're learning. You're learning. <laughs> no, you know, I don't care. I don't care about the ranks, but Jim, I'll hear out of his room, we dropped again. <laughs> fucking Mark Marin. <laughs> he, he's fucking going crazy over He's going to kill Mark Marin. Uh, you and I did a show. We did our HBO shows. Before we get into this, can I tell you one thing that I never told anybody about uh, Last Comic Standing? Yeah. I was banging that stripper. Which one? <laughs> the one that was on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, uh, she, uh, uh, she kept going, we should, tell, we should let people in on this and let people know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, said, I have enough trouble having a career. Like, I don't need to like, make a career out of this shit. And she was like, eh. And they sent the cameras up to my room one day. Oh, she wanted to like bubble like a spinoff, like, hey, romance is in the air, last comic yeah. standing. And I was like, no, no. Check no. out these two middle acts fucking. Exactly. <laughs> she wasn't even a middle act. And I was like, I don't need this, this going on. Right. So, and for some weird reason, I have a filthy sense of humor and really offensive. And I say stuff on the radio and on, on TV and on stage. But I just kept thinking about my parents, you know, because Last Comic Standing was like all of America watched. Yeah, it was very Disney. And all very I kept clean. thinking was everybody's going to watch and they're just going to go, oh, this is what Eddie does now. <laughs> you know, just letting my parents down. My mom's so Catholic. She calls me every week asking if I went to church. You go to St. Monica's? Mom? I don't go to church anymore. I don't believe in God anymore. How could you not? Well, how? This is what I say to people that say I don't believe in God. How do you know what I think is God? Like, how could you not believe? No, no, in I understand. A thing? I understand that, and I don't. I don't. It's almost I'm, like that AA, like higher I'm power like thing. Like, that, like, how do you not believe I, in like the I, sun? I, like, I believe atheism is a religion. Also, like, I'm not an atheist. I, I am agnostic. And people say you're a middle of the fence guy. And actually, I read a book that I heard you on Love Lines or something talking about once. Uh, uh, Rescuing the Scriptures from the Fundamentalists. John Shelby Spong. So, so I've read a lot of amazing book. book. Uh, have you ever read? Uh, the History of God. I love it. Yeah, it's a great book. It's written by that Catholic nun. Oh, she was Catholic. And oddly nun. secular. Yeah. Very weirdly. Yeah. Um, That's what made me trip me out about John Shelby Spong's book. He writes this book. I'm not telling you. I'm telling the listeners. He's the Archbishop of the Episcopalian Episcopal, Church. Yeah. And he writes an entire book about defending gay marriage because people that are against gay marriage say like well it says here in the bible and he started saying well it also says that lot had sex with his daughters right. so if you're going to interpret it literally then lot is a pedophile if adam and eve were the first two people then that means we're all just mongoloid inbred retarded people right and thou shalt not kill like the old everyone broke all the uh, test uh, sorry, the does commandments, he get, he like, lot, like, uh, like Moses parted the Red Sea. Well, when he unparted it, hundreds of thousands of Egyptians <laughs> drowned and died. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt not kill. And he proves chronologically, like Jesus and John the Baptist couldn't have met. But what's great is, he's not some crazy UCAL Berkeley wacko liberal professor. He's a freaking archbishop that loves Christ saying, sure. let's, let's not and, do and, this word for word. Let's just take these as stories. And love each other. And the chick that wrote the history of God was kind of the same thing, where she said she, you know, she just wanted to get to the bottom of it. And but to her point is that all the Bible is and all those books are all man made. Yeah, man made this all, and it's not some divine intervention. Right, it came from man created. That's why your idea of God, whatever it may be, 
I'm fine with that because yeah. my idea – I don't know. There's like a hundred – I always say this. The way I d- look at it, my dog looks at my MacBook and has no idea how the operating system works. She's a very smart dog, but she doesn't know how it works and never will have the ability to comprehend it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt yeah. Cohen said, I but, don't know. How but like some people do and, and humans are capable of it. But we're never – like a dog will never be capable of understanding an operating system. We're never going to be able to be – be able to understand or comprehend the universe and how right. it works. We just don't have the capability. So it might be something so beyond our imagination right. that to, to put labels on it or to subscribe to just, anything I'm I say is, is crazy. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the astrophysicist, when talking about – I like the way you just said that. It was like well, – I, I wasn't sure if I was getting the name right. <laughs> He's so badass. He's the cool black guy. He's always on The Daily Show. He wears like a piano key tie. Yeah. He's the one that said Pluto wasn't a planet and he got like death threats from third graders. He downgraded Pluto. So your fucking 10th planet gym, they're right. real fucking morons. There's only – there should be ninth planet gym because there's only eight planets. Hey, I had to give them a good plug. Yeah. <laughs> So he said about higher life forms than us, like extraterrestrials, do you, like how would we know? Like we're waiting for this light to come out of the sky. He goes, do you think a snail knows you just walked past it? And when he said that, that totally bugged me out. Yeah. Like so for all we know, hey man, this <laughs> fucking pass a joint. Yeah. Where's the skull bong? Bruce no, Lee. Think that, Bruce Lee was very bad, man. I, I don't smoke pot anymore and to think that way is is very uh it's it's fucking easy. It's uh you go like how do we know we're not just a cell in some in the fucking that old Dennis e- Miller e- elbow of uh, some giant monster that's How do around. I know the color I see is blue? Is the same color as you see. Hey, check the fucking crayon box, okay, Sagan? I'm high over here. <laughs> check it, check it, check, check. <laughs> but the whole thing with uh the Bible is that and not not to go I mean, we're getting Get into Rogan preaching. territory here, but and he does it better than anybody. I say that with all the respect and bow down. Is you got to imagine we start writing about the rebel? Excuse me. Yes, we start writing about the Civil War now, like today, right? In 2011, in October, we put pen to paper. This is what went down at fucking. This is what happened at Shiloh, man. Were you there? No. Like no one when Christ was walking around, they weren't like, "Holy shit, this guy's pretty." So, so why do you still go to church then? I love it there. I had a calling. I walked in. I felt at home. I had very odd, mysterious providence type things happen to me. When I go to church, the homily, it's like they've read my file. I'm like, how did they know that about me to have an entire homily about what I, like my number one stress Wednesday to Sunday, I come in, sit down in the pew and I, you know, and then they, they're just talking about it. Um, I loved the classes I took. I converted from Presbyterian. That's to the weirdest thing I've ever heard of in my whole life. And then I had just a great relationship with Father Tim. The priest was thirty. He was the new priest, and they like paired us up during my RCIA classes. And like we would surf together and work out together. Go to like Krav Maga. He's like the coolest guy in the world. And I would ask him questions, and he was like super, super on it. It's a whole long other podcast if you ever want to yeah. break that all that down. Um, and I had people in power at St. Monica's look me in my eye and just really rub their temples and say, I don't know. And it was the first time in my life I ever had someone in a robe or a teacher or a professor or a monsignor acknowledge that this is so far beyond even my grasp. Like they are admitting they they don't. Yeah. Really, well, I and I, I can't name names because they're going against the Vatican. Right, right, right. But like, I, do you I'm, believe in hell? And like, just take your glasses off and go. I, my God's bigger than that. Yeah, I've and I, you go like, whoa! I don't think you're supposed to say that here, bro. That's not I'd, the company I'd, line. I had a fan that was a Catholic priest who actually saw me on Last Comic Standing and then bought my CDs and then wrote me a letter and saying, I saw you on Last Comic Stand, you were really funny, then I got your CDs, and you're so foul and offensive, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, it's not for you, priest. And so I, so, no, so Beat I'm, it, priest. I'm ready to write back this big letter <laughs> going, you know, like, I don't give a shit what you think about my language, blah, 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 and then I look at the bottom, and it says, Father something, something, and I go, 
the fuck are you doing? Like, and then, so I start, I write back to him. And at the time I was like leaving, like stopping believing in God altogether. So I started talking to him online and we were like pen pals going back and forth on email asking questions. 